Hi, and welcome to Frazzlecast. Climb aboard the gnome train. Woo! Chugga, 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 woo! Please make sure to keep your limbs and experimental instruments inside the train at all times. And now, on with the show. A podcast by a Blizzard fan gnome about World of Warcraft and geeky stuff. I promise you, they do talk about the world of Warcraft. They just go off the rails sometimes. May the second be with you because I'm Frazzy. Okay, this joke won't really work because it's no longer be May the second when this release. But I had to, I had to at least do it. We're, we're too close to that. But I am joined by Fingaro. Hello. And Allie of Dungeon Fables and all things Azeroth. Hello. It's great to have both of you. So on this episode, we get to know Fingaro a bit because... Whenever I have, have guests on for the first time, I love to get to know them. I want to, because I find I go, don't get a time to sit down with the guest until the episode. So we're going to kind of go over their gaming history, talk about where they are right now on their vacation from Azeroth, and talk about some non gaming hobbies. But first, Epic and Sandy, what time is it? It's time to go around the table. Great idea. So what have you been up to recently? Let's start with Fingaro. Well, I think this week mostly has been a. Uh, break, like you said, from Azeroth. So I've been looking into some ESO and playing the Elder Scrolls, checking that out. And uh, to keep things still Blizzard, a lot of Overwatch and checking out Heroes of the Storm since all the uh, increase in heroes and then the changes they've made to the game itself. So I've been working on that a lot and then keeping busy with IRL stuff and finding free time for family. Nice. The, the ESO still is tempting because, <laughs> except for the loot boxes, I, I had a, a, a couple years stint in ESO and I enjoyed the ESO uh, and like going back into Skyrim kind of got me hungry for ESO again. I just, those loot boxes, I bought that $40 one day horse when it first came out. Do, do you remember that one, the, the blue horse in ESO? I remember it. I, I, I bought that. So it's on my ESO account. <laughs> there you go. So you need to come back and ride it. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, Allie, when you aren't buying $40 horses in ESO, because I don't think Ooh. you're buying $40 horses. I didn't know I was doing that. <laughs> Well, I mean, when you're not doing that, uh, what have you been up to? <laughs> not that. Although I did, like, way in the early days at ESO, like, I played played a little bit, and I, I enjoyed it. But I was already pretty involved in WoW and had my sub in WoW and everything. So I decided to stick with that. But ESO is pretty great. So that's definitely understandable. Maybe not the $40 horses, but... <laughs> Those shinies, they're so addicting. I get it. I get the shinies. I have been up to raiding, nice. which is my normal. I finally beat Crucible of Storms, which is really cool. And I like that fight a lot. And I like the the ambiance and the old god themes and everything. And it was really good. I am also working through an Iron Man challenge with WoW Challenges. On a dwarf pally. She is now level somewhere in the early 20s, <laughs> which has been fun. There's times where it's definitely a challenge and times where I feel like it'll be easy. Then I start getting too cocky and then I start leveling. When you're wearing only white and gray gear, you're, you're a little squishy after a while. <laughs> So it's definitely really enjoyable. It's It feels like it's a different way to play the game. That community is all really supportive of each other. So I'm really having a lot of fun with that. I'm also one well, Garrison mission, shipyard mission away from getting my captain title. Nice. For my monk. Just one more. Unfortunately, I've had time to play my monk because I've been working way too much lately. But when, when she gets there, she will have it. I'm that close. So excited. But but I mean, you're only working like eight, eight to six. I mean, I mean, surely... Oh, that's right, because you've also released a amazing Karazhan episode one, which I loved. That was a good episode. That was my longest episode ever, and that took a lot of time to research and edit. I'm still a little sleep deprived from it, <laughs> and I'm working on part two this week. <laughs> so it was it was a lot of fun, though. I think doing the opera event section was definitely the most fun because of the voice lines and everything. And Oh, yeah. I just have way too much fun with that, so... Because one thing I've always loved is I realized that we typically will cheese the fights, so we don't hear those lines. I like yeah. it when you when you take time to explain what happened, but then say, "Here are the lines," and I'm, I'm like, th th "That witch!" I, I can't even do it. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. One more, one more time. I couldn't hear you. Ah! 
<laughs> I sounded more SpongeBob. I was trying to do the Emperor's laugh a while back, and I could not do it the, the way they did in the Skywalker trailer. So, um, and I, I know that might be a spoiler, but if if you haven't heard that the Emperor is coming back in Skywalker right now, then uh, it's in the trailer. Really <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i've definitely been enjoying dungeon fables and and yeah kara i mean wow sargeras and medivh i knew that that storyline but getting to research a little more into remembering who his mom was and actually and, and i knew that bit of it i didn't know that Egwin and medivh actually like duked it out and got into a fight and stuff like i had no idea about that so i definitely learned a lot and i'm learning more for this week's episode since I did, you know, the whole two-parter with Karazhan. So I've spent some time in Karazhan in the last couple of weeks. No mount yet. <laughs> still need to, I still need to go into it at least one more time, I think. Maybe two. Either way, maybe. We'll see. Solely for research, I'm sure. Absolutely. Mostly. Thankfully, there's a portal now. Oh, wait. No, there's no. One. Honestly, the flight from Stormwind to Deadwind Pass is not that bad. No. I'm glad they're putting the Caverns of Time portal back in because that flight feels a little longer and the ending location is going to be inside the Caverns of Time as opposed to the entrance of the cave into that area because it's a long flight down. Oh, it is. So I'm really glad they're putting that portal back in. But the Karazhan portal, I'm okay with. It's it's okay. Yeah, because I mean, I, I think Medivh probably has enough with house guests coming in all the time. <laughs> yes. But yeah, it's just other than that's been Game of Thrones and Avengers and all sorts of epicness with that. Oh my god, yeah. What a week. Oh, I, yeah. Yeah. My nephew wanted to see Avengers and I was like, three hours. I gotta edit. So I I I I'm glad I took time last weekend to see Avengers Endgame. So worth it. I'm gonna respect the wishes of the directors of, of Marvel and not spoil anything. Just say it's amazing. Um, please don't take away my geek card though, because I realize I have not seen Age of Ultron or Infinity War or a oh, lot of right. in between. Yeah. You went into Endgame without seeing Infinity War? I knew what happened though. I had heard enough things from different things. I'm not averse to spoilers. I realize I'm on the internet. Spoilers are gonna happen. So I went to a few of my friends who are big Marvel fans. I said, okay, I'm going into this. Tell me what I need to absolutely know before going in. So they helped clear up a few things. I, I don't know if that's okay. That's like, here's a saga. Here's the last book. You're good to go. Just go ahead. So what you need to do, Frasley, it, you know, you got summer coming up. You, you can wait till summer. That's fine. You need to watch all of them yes. like from the beginning, even from, from the very first Iron Man even, and just watch them all and then watch Endgame when it comes out on DVD or whatever and see just how amazing Endgame truly is to wrap up this epic series of 11 something years you need to just for the full effect of it i think it's actually 11 years today i saw something on twitter that iron man was released today 11 yeah that sounds about right really wow and he's the one who started the avengers in the first avengers movie yeah that was the start of the whole marvel for the build up to everything that was the first one and wasn't that the first one from disney or was that still under marvel when they did that one i think that was still under marvel wasn't it i believe so okay so because I mean that one was amazing, and they you can tell Disney's made it so much better from there. And you know this will be good for for Disney Plus because I, I I recently learned that the yearly fee for Disney Plus will be sixty nine dollars. I'm like, man, I, if you get all the access to all the movies, that's going to be pretty good. So yeah, so so I, so I saw the Avengers. One of the things I, mean, I I also did last Friday was I passed my public relations course. I was so nervous going in, and I just got my official grade today. So I kind of put the news out early than getting the official grade. But what was funny about this whole course that I've been doing for my degree, I started my degree in communication because I used to be, make YouTube videos. Then I started these podcasts because of my of my communications degree. So it's, it's amazing to see where that's uh, coming along and that I'm growing as a communicator through this podcast because of my degree. <laughs> there you go. Everything counts for something and it all attaches back to what you work on. And it's it's amazing. Like like public relations, you, you go through some things and, and like I see how like public relations I also get to watch a company go through interesting public relations choices and all that. And I've got like nine papers that I've made on Blizzard that I did for school that I'll, I will be reading at some point on, on the show because I, I I get to study Blizzard, my company to watch for my degree. And I've got a capstone coming up. I can figure out what I want to do for my capstone, but I could see something work related. Yeah. Outside of Blizzard, before I get into my, what I did in WoW, 
I want to lift up two games that I saw because of Tom of Three Extra Lives. If you are looking for a great podcast to pull out great indie games, also some fun news and those trivia, I'm finally up to 10 total lives on the trivia. So I, I, I'm now in the double digit lives. I've been playing Wander Song. So this is part of the humble monthly bundle that Tom got me into as well. And I, it's like only 12 bucks a month and it goes to charity and you get games. So I can't stop playing the, the humble bundle monthly. But Wander Song came out. So I started playing this. I can't stop playing it. It's so much fun. You get to sing. Well, your character gets to sing and all that. So the whole time along, you're going along, you're a bard. And I mean, and, and the bard's all happy. And I'm like, <laughs> it's almost like they made a character about me in a game. It's Is it a gnome bard or just a bard? Just, just a bard. Ah. Bard's going along singing and having fun. So I, I'm definitely enjoying it. And then... There's a free game, but it has a supporter pack called Antenna Dilemma. So this is another game that Tom mentioned, and I finished chapter one, and I could not stop laughing. It's It wasn't way too long, and every moment of it was just fun, and, and I enjoyed it. So definitely Wonder Song and Antenna Dilemma. If you want two games that just add into your between um, WoW's time, I love those. And then in WoW, I'm working on getting more questing on Fraz because I trying to get some of the, some of the things I get, didn't get done. So I did the Magni quest line and I got a quest that you get from Kelsey Spanspark on the Legion ship, or you can also get it from Gallywix. You just got to n- ignore his ugly stomach that, that he never puts a shirt on. So it's, this quest is definitely worth doing. Um, if you are a fan of Christy Golden and Christy Golden's work, you will absolutely want to do this quest. So that's all I will say there. I haven't done it yet. It's on my list of things to do, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, because I'm, I'm I'm dying to get to it. It really isn't a long quest. So I I, I didn't know how long it would be. You just have to do I, one of the quests you got to do before you do it. So I enjoyed that. And then when I'm not wandering around singing as a bard, I've been leveling Korlak. So Korlak is now into Legion content. So I got my artifact and I'm now level 104. So I'm working my way through Azuna's first and all that. I, I need to get the heritage armor so I can then work on my druid. But I realized I want another one, 120. So I'm going to level <laughs> Korlak to 120. Nice. I'm not ready. So how many do you have right now? I've got three right now. All Alliance or did, are you bifactional? Uh, bifactional. I got one is my Taran Hunter. Uh, Intel and then uh, Fraz. That's right. I forgot about Intel. And then my Dark Iron Dwarf, or as uh, Seek Jet likes to say, my Dark Iron Duck. Because <laughs> the character's <laughs> armor for Dark Iron Dwarf, <laughs> it's a duckbill. On the helmet for Dark Iron Dwarfs, the side profile is a duckbill. <laughs> I'll have to look at that. My Dark Iron Dwarf, I think, stopped at level. No, it's 95. So you finished leveling, so I get the Heritage armor. I'll have to take a look at your. Your your duck bill. <laughs> it's funny, and now I can't stop thinking Ducktales. Woo! <laughs> That's gonna be stuck in my head all night, Frasley. Yes, all night. As long as nobody's tapping into a bank of coins, which would actually probably kill you. <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that would definitely kill me. <laughs> but but at least I'd be I'd be rich as uh, Scrooge. Yeah. So Fingaro, when you aren't diving into a, <laughs> I don't know how I like to use it as a tradition. I like your segues. Keep going, Frasley. Keep going. Keep going. So when you aren't diving into a pool of deadly coins, you do video games. I wanted to know a little about your gaming history. How did you get into gaming? Wait, this is a gaming podcast? Am I the wrong one? I'm sorry. Oh, no, actually, <laughs> this is the Fibercast. Remember that, Ellie? Yeah. Yes. I don't want to date myself, but I still remember having to do dial-up to play games if I played something online. And the first game that probably like held on to me a little bit was popping nine three-and-a-half-inch floppies of Doom to install and playing that <laughs> repetitively and over and over and changing, you know, they would have different levels of difficulty and just rocking those over and over again. And in that same era, because I think last week when you were talking to Rooster, you reminded me of uh, Heretic. And all that one, Wolfenstein, uh, Doom, all of them kind of came out in the same area. And uh, Quake as well were all like my original PC gaming. Not so much online with people, but to connect and downloads, things like that. That's where I started and I was hooked. And it's amazing to realize where we came from. I, I know like uh, Michael Gaines was saying that Pong was still one of their favorite games. No offense, Michael, Mr. Starman, I'm not there, but uh, I, I was a Pong player. Oh, you have me by a few Mr. years. Mr. Starman. Mr. Starman. Hey, I like it. Professional, good. remember, Ali? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but that, that's where I started. Was It was back on, on Doom and 
Quake and Heretic. And years later, there were some other games that, you know, showed me D&D and uh, aspects of that. And there's a whole section of Pools of Radiance, I think was the name of it. But there was one where it was Pool of Radiance and the Myth Draenor. And, and that was the first kind of intro to what D&D and specifically playing like a wizard or another character would be like. And, you know, growing up, you guys in my teens at that time, but that was uh, probably one of the best games I ever played. And like, uh, whenever I hear people talk about uh, good old games, GOG and all that, I'm, I haven't looked, but if I could find that on there, that would probably be, you could ask me for $40. I'd pay for that again, without a doubt. I'm going to bet it's there. I mean, I'm, I'm amazed what I find on, on GOG. I, I, I found my old Titanic adventure game that I, that from a company that's bankrupt. Yes, I remember watching you with those players that would talk and sound would come out like two minutes later. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that game had so many issues. I mean, that's one of my favorite gaming memories is that game and like just like enjoying the hours of Titanic. So what is one of your favorite gaming memories? How do you pick like one or a great or this or that? So, I mean, going back to, like I said, playing those games as a kid, it's not necessarily that it was playing the game or that was the, the game was the memory. It was the fact that when I was a kid, that was something me and so I say dad is but my stepdad, but that's who raised me and he taught me about computers and I don't know, I think I was eight years old building computers and putting parts together. And in and, and that essence, to be able to have the PC to play the game would probably, as a kid, be one of the, the biggest things that ever influenced me. When I thought about it in the future, a lot of games. But when it came around circle was when I actually got him to play WoW with me. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I think I was in my 20s or something. You know, I was getting ready to buy a house and I, I was staying with him for a little while and, and paying off debt and getting ready. And he's like, what are you playing? You come home from work. And what, what is this? So I showed him what it was, broke it down for him. And even though I'm on a break, he's been playing for, I think, like eight years now. Wow. <laughs> Very cool. That, that would say as an adult or, or grown person, that was probably the best one. Probably amazed him to be like, to see where games have come to and to be like, if you think about the amazing heck of, wow, that we have all this stuff in these MMOs online and that it's there and it's persistent. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, when you had Warcraft and Warcraft 2 and Warcraft 3, yeah, you played that, but I didn't always go and play like starcraft i didn't play other people i just with the pc version just sat there and did my rts and i was good and he did the same thing we never had that full connection but then when they made wow online and i was like this is the same stuff we were playing there but better yeah and he was like oh okay so hooked sense you've been playing wow since vanilla and then uh, and then your dad's probably been playing since like wrath i think he actually did come out in, in wrath about that time so how did you get into blizzard and or wow if i reach back before wow was out the games that i were well they overlap but what i started beforehand was um, star wars galaxies mm -hmm. was one of the big ones me and a bunch of people from work all play there was like i think eight or ten of us that were on different shifts and we'd get off and basically just hook up and whoever was on at that time we would play and you know, we went from that to there was a Battlefield series. There's, I don't know, there's 12 of them, but we played Battlefield Vietnam. Same thing. Our guild got bigger. We grew and we're like, man, this is great. And I think those overlapped into, for us, because Galaxies kind of crashed. I don't know if you ever played that, but. Oh, well, yeah. It was basically, if you want to be a Jedi, it's the hardest thing you can get. Yes. And then just around, I think it was 05, a little before, they released, you know, saying, hey, this is what it's going to be. And everybody can be a Jedi. Game crashed, 2005, gone, done. Everybody hates that thing. Jettison out, we're done. That was one of the things about being the Jedi is that it was supposed to be special. It was supposed to be something that you came across right. these stones. And and I mean, part of the thing was you weren't a Jedi in Star Wars Galaxy. That was the fun of it. You were like, I was a musician and dancer. I mean, you built houses. You enjoyed a life in Star Wars. If you have it across these stones, then great. You were one of the chosen ones. Absolutely. And, and that's the thing, because you went and earned all that. And then when they just made it, here you go, this is this is everything. You don't have to work for it anymore. And that's one of the things that, that'll ruin a game in a heartbeat. And when that crashed, we were looking for something else to play. And as we were finishing, kind of getting bored with Battle for Vietnam, one of the guys at work said, hey, I think Rift and stuff came out back in the day like that. And we tried oh, yeah. all this different stuff. And the one that stuck was World of Warcraft. So when we got into playing that, out of the... So when I say we started with eight people, by the time we were playing Battlefield Vietnam, there was... I think I was paying for a 100-person Ventrilo server, and that was almost always maxed out. Like, we wow. we didn't want to buy bigger than that because we couldn't afford it. But, you know, we were maxed out. And then when we came to WoW, it dwindled out. People went to different stuff. But there was probably about 30 or 40 of us that came into WoW on Laughing Skull for the NA server. And we rocked it out there starting as Horde. And it just 
it hooked it stayed and that was it right right now i'm just thinking of vietnam and like the cars and like the radio and like you, you crouch down waiting for the enemy you hear the bird is the word the word is the bird because <laughs> that game I, I had like so much cool like the spatial sound of and, and i would always turn up the radio and my car and like of course it's also why i give them a blame to the enemy where i was every time right, absolutely <laughs> But that was the thing. You could fly a Huey chopper around and like it would come overhead. And you and again, while I, what hooked you in the game is you'd, you'd hear great music from the 70s pumping out of that. And as it flew over, it wasn't just always there. It was spatial. As it moved away, it got dimmer and oh, yeah. fly choppers and planes and tanks and car or jeeps, whatever they were. And yeah, you get on the back of that gun and if the, if the play music and it was just it was an intense game. And my favorite modern combat has to actually be the Desert Combat mod for Battlefield 1942. That actually was better than any modern combat I've ever played. Yeah, good stuff. I mean, they, they made great games. And I think for me, not even taking a break from WoW even back then, but I would still play. They had Battlefield 1, then Battlefield 2. And Battlefield 1 wasn't bad, but 2, they started to lose interest when it just wasn't the same game. And they didn't, to me, they didn't put the same effort in the design. Um, and the way they play the classes, you know, just like, wow, if you change something to class, the forms are going to blow up. Same thing happened in those games, but it was enough where it just wasn't enjoyable. So when you first start finding WoW, it was easier to just drop off that and go full bore into WoW. It's interesting that you bring up frustrations with games like with Star Wars Galaxies and stuff like that. What would you say is your biggest frustration about your enjoyment of WoW at the moment? Same one with any game. Stop handing everything out to people. Stop making it easy. Blizzard makes a great game. It's still great. It's still fun. Graphics, like, you know, we talked on playing ESO right now. Graphics are not even the same. ESO looks way better. But WoW has history for me that ESO, not lore, like, you know, what Ali does, like, we can get into that. But the history of my playing this game is deeper than anything I've played ever. So many, many years, 20-something years. When you take from classic, and yeah, a game has to evolve. You got to keep people interested. You have to make a new race or a new class or a new style. But when you just start handing stuff to people and making a cookie cutter, to me, that makes the game less fun because people go out and look for a build. When you take classic and you had three trees, yeah, you could cookie cutter. But at the same time, I had a lot of flexibility in what I wanted to be and how I wanted to play it. Or if I wanted to play, say, two hunters and do them differently, I could mix and match how I wanted. Whereas now, when you pick a talent, I've got, what, six or seven options right there. And that's it. And, and for the most part, almost everybody is the same. Yeah. You know, you have best in slot. Great. So basically, if I want best in slot for everything... I'm going to look like this pally and that pally, except for the fact that we're a different race or, you know, you might mod the gear to look differently. But when you hand stuff out to me, that changes the game. I miss working for what I got. Yeah, mods are, or not mods, but add-ons are fun and that's great. But shoot, I, I walked the Barrens for God knows how long and got lost and found <laughs> and, But how great was that to now where, like, I listened to the portal chat and all the stuff when they took all that out. And except for going from Boralus to Stormwind or if I'm a Horde, those major ones, I don't portal. Unless I have a mage in the, in the group or if I'm getting out of a raid or something, I don't portal. I fly, I walk, and I ride a horse. And I haven't flown in two expansions. Because if you're flying and portaling and going everywhere, you're skipping out and missing the things in the game that were designed and built there for everybody. Now, and I get everybody plays differently, but like you said, those are my frustrations. And I feel like they're getting too complaint in the form. Here, I hand you something. Here's your cookie. Go, you'll be fine. And I don't know. I, I don't think they're going anywhere, but at the same time, I think they need to make some changes. That's just my opinion. I definitely get that. And, and I get missing on content. I mean, one of my joys of BFA when it first came out, was exploring the zone. I loved being one of the first people, thanks to Tom for pointing it out to me, Tom told me to go to Tear Guard Sound and look for a gnome handing out selfie quests. I go there, <laughs> I find the, the clues to Mechagon. That was because I went out and explored because somebody told me to do something. And in vanilla, I would go to places because someone said, hey, you need to go to that place. Somebody told me, go to Strathdome. There's a mount from the Baron that drops. And in fact, I didn't look at loot tables but I was told to go here and here. That is one thing that is missed. I mean, I'm also somebody that it takes me like three seconds to not know where something is. I go on my head because it's, it's too easy for me to look it up. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and I get because the age variance of who plays the game is quite varied because my dad is literally playing. And if I'm my age and he's older than me, there's kids that are 10, 11, 12 playing. So you, you don't want it yeah. to be so hard. You're losing. If you like it from their side, you don't want to miss out on the money, the subs and all that stuff. But at the same time, you're building something for them to enjoy and they need to be able to do that. So I get that. But so Allie and I, although she's more lore, are dungeon and raid people. I can do it all day long. 
I do not, and I hate doing rep grind for God knows what, for whoever to go fly. That's a waste of my time because you make it as some insane thing where if you go back in time, I could buy a tabard, wear a tabard, grind out doing things I like to get that now. And I get, you have the people that don't do dungeons, but for everything technologically you can do in this game, why can't you make it a choice where you pick one and that's it. So I pick, I get to earn it in dungeons and make it equivalent. When I go in, I can earn the same amount per week as another person doing dailies. I don't get how you can't do that. And I get to pick. So if I take my dwarf shaman battle hammer, I pick him and I make that choice. I can't change it done over, but I can go by the tabbers and earn it the same way so that everybody's getting what they want. You're still making me work for it. I still have to go get it. I still need it for pathfinder, whatever, but people are getting those things they need. And it's, I don't know, you can do all this stuff, but at the same time, it's just where they shut other things down, they cookie cut and hand to the other and, I think they have it backwards. That would solve a lot of things. Because I know a lot of people who hate that they're in Legion, there were profession things gated behind dungeons. Oh, yeah. Obviously, I like that because I like dungeons. But I understand that they don't. They're so focused right now on trying to cater to all these different kind of play styles. And there's so many different kinds of play styles, so it's challenging. But if we got the option of, say, doing a rip grind versus doing things in dungeons, like I think that would appease a lot of different people. I think it's that would be a good idea. Yeah. And to me, because when I think about it, somebody's like, oh, good, bad, whatever. But that's why I say it's not per account, it's per character. If you do it that way. Yeah. You might have a character where you're, whether you're on an RP server or not, but, you know, everybody in their head, I think, has a background of what they think their characters are. Like, I'm a Salvatore fan. If you look at any of my tunes, they're either named after of or based off of a tune out of that book, or saga, I should say. So if I want one where it's more combat style, then I'm going to go in dungeons and do my thing. But if I have one that's more for me in RP where I'm thinking about how that character was in a book, I can pick that character then to go do that grind because to me that character is going to be more out in the world. Common sense just hurts, I guess. And I, I think that's a common sense option. Well, and that is one thing that made Star Wars Galaxies great is you decided what each character did and it didn't have to do everything. Right. It was open to what you wanted to be. I was a sniper doctor. I'm like, awesome. Great. I could kill things and make a ton of money and heal at the same time. It's like, perfect. I was what I wanted to be. And now with WoW the way it is, like I said, cookie cutter, if I want to play a shaman, it says, well, for the way I play, I need versatility. Well, great. I have to run with a hunter to get versatility because it doesn't drop on anything that comes from my tune. So it's like I could, you know, spend all day working on that, but you're just making it difficult. You're on vacation right now from WoW playing a game where you get to decide on each character what you do you decide if you're a mage wielding warrior who sends out spells and then, then close combat so you're playing elder Scrolls online which i think does a great job at not keeping you at least when i was playing it to one play style correct yeah what they're going for is and i actually i was talking to you guys pre-show is like i have so many podcasts i'm listening to and i've only found one eso podcast i like but between the way I've played it and seen it and listening to them, the goal of ESO is actually to make it where everybody's relevant, period. There is no best in slot, wear whatever gear you find. You know, yeah, wait till you're maxed out and, and you reach your cap in that sense to get your end game gear, but you don't have to wear a certain one or a certain style. You can be whatever you want. I went into a dungeon the other day and the sorcerer was the tank. Play the way you want to play and be who you want to be. And I think that's one of the things that drew me when I decided to take a break from WoW was it's not cookie cutter. Because like there's guys in my guild that play and, and they'll follow, they'll go to a website and be like, oh, what's the best build for this? And the one thing I found listening to one, that podcast, and two, my own research is it doesn't matter. You can have that cookie cutter, but at the same time, it doesn't mean you're going to play it the same way because they've been playing longer or might have more experience or they're in a group that they play regularly. You can be whatever you want to be. And I, I think the other thing that draws me is the, the different class, not classes, but uh, races. I like that it's varied like WoW is where um, a Khajiit is a cat. So I got like a white tiger looking dude. And I'm like, well, that's pretty dang cool. But at the same time, he's built like a hunter, but he's not a hunter. That variance and that change is what I think makes their game so great is the fact that everybody's relevant. One's called like a Nightblade. So if you were to think, wow, bro, um, if you're going to say sorcerer, it'd be a combination of a warlock and a mage. You can't literally mage tank and wow. I mean, yeah, you talk about it. Long term, you're not going to survive. But in ESO, they've made it to where no matter what you are, you play it however you want, and you're always relevant, and you're always part of the group. You're always needed. And I think that's great. 
Yeah, they've even added the one Tamriel. I, I've not played during that, but I would assume when you go in there that you may have more powers the more you play, but you can team up with anybody and do a lot of things. So 10 opens up like Dungeon the PvP, and I haven't tried their PvP, so I can't speak to that at all. But I can go in at a level 10 where um, if nobody's played ESO, once you hit level 50, so that would be like your vanilla cap, that's your your end. But like Diablo, they do, they call it champion points, and then you build up from there and you're still earning your skill points that you put into your tree, which what I missed from WoW is different sets of trees. And you're still putting that in there and it, you vary it out to however you need to be. And it, it doesn't matter. Uh, I haven't done it, but I know you can respect. So if you want to change and try something else, it's there. Pay a little gold, done, over with, switch it up. I think the other thing I like is dual wielding is different in that game. It's a little more fluid. And I think that's an important thing that I don't know if I could do, but I don't think it's that dire. But like if I'm in a dungeon and I'm playing um, like one of the guys I'm working on now is I'm trying to build like a tank guy. I go sword and board, go in there, do my thing and and rock and roll. But on the fly, as soon as I'm out of combat, I hit one button because I can play with a controller and I immediately switch weapons automatically and my new power comes right back up. And then as soon as I finish that mob, I can switch back on the fly in the dungeon as I go. And I think that's a nice feature. And somebody was like talking about uh, part of Final Fantasy 14 and I haven't played that, but some of my guild were IRL that were a small guild. There's like 10 of us or less, but we're all taking breaks due to other things. And that's one of the other games that people are looking at to find that we love WoW, but at the same time, when you need a break, let's look at what we have. And that's one of those games that, that gives you that variance on that option. Yeah. And that's the thing, like option, the freedom. Like I remember, you know, when I did play ESO for at least a little bit and checked it out, like I really enjoyed that there was that more freedom. It took me a little bit to get used to that feeling. The use to, for example, a mage could be a tank. Like you didn't need to be a set role or set character to fill a certain role. And I remember really liking that and that freedoms that ESO gives you to play the way you want to play really gives players a chance to do what they want to do. So instead of having to work extra to cater to all these different play styles, you already have that freedom, which is something I definitely enjoyed in ESO. And if I wasn't so invested in Warcraft and my group of friends in Warcraft at that time when I was playing ESO, I probably would have ditched Warcraft and gone to that. It's definitely a good game. I wouldn't ever tell people, drop WoW, go to ESO, drop WoW, go to Final yeah. Fantasy XIV. I'll come back at some point. I, oh, geez. So any of us that have been playing since vanilla have been playing for, what, 14? Depending on when you started, if you were in vanilla. But if you haven't taken a break, I commend you. But at the same time, you can only do so much of something for so long before you need whether you call it a mental health break because you're burnt out on something or whatever it is, I'll always come back to WoW probably because like I said, there's it's more than just the playing of the game. It's my dad's there and friends of mine are there. And you know, even though I don't always talk to him, people from when I was on Laughing Skull and Horde, because literally for half I was Horde now on Alliance, but it'll always be there. But they could adopt things, see what other people are doing. Don't steal it, but do it in your own way. Like bring things that other games have. If you're actually listening to your forms and listening to your people, I get you don't want to do everything because you don't want to, you know, there might be issues that you can't do it in a similar fashion, but find something that brings that feeling and that opportunity. And that's a way to freshen up your game without cookie cuttering all the other stuff because it, it makes it a new game for you. Because when you have something that other games have, you're having it in your favorite thing. And I don't think it's a difficult thing to do. Just bring in like, yeah, somebody's podcast, Lagging Ball, somebody was like, what is something you wish was in WoW and housing? Yep. That's at the top of most people's list. I know it's at the top of my list. I would love that. Yeah. Because like if I were in WoW and like, what was it? Back in the day, used to have Anixia's head on a spike. Put that over my mantle. Come on, let's rock that thing out. (laughs) You know, it's going to smell after a while, but we'll be okay. But I like that. I like that I could have, it doesn't have to be huge, but a place where I can put things and show it off, whether it's just for me or if like a guild mate comes over, whatever. I think that's something that's amazing. I mean, there's tons that ESO has. I wish WoW did, but I think regardless, even Galaxies, ESO, I don't know about Final Fantasy 14, but housing, like that's a huge thing that people have wanted. And it's like, why can't you do it? You gave me a farm in Pandaria. You can't give me a little shack to hang out in. I mean, I don't think it's a difficult thing. You gave me a garrison cool everybody's got the exact same garrison they're doing the exact same thing but in the house i make it my own that's mine you know so like i go into alleys and she's gonna have something different than me and that's a cool thing and and i wish they would listen and and adapt that now maybe they can't because there's some copyright i don't know how all that stuff works that's above me but i think they might in this next expansion i think there has been enough outcry for that 
and they could use some good PR these days. <laughs> and so I think that they're smart enough and they're going to make that work. I could be entirely wrong. They could announce it come BlizzCon or whatever, and they don't say a single thing about it, but they have the technology. Oh, they yeah. did the whole garrison thing. You know, you had to phase in and out of your garrison area or hearth to it, and but you could port someone else's garrison. Like, they can use that technology. Like, they have it in there. For example, in Final Fantasy fourteen, for a lot of people, like, that's that's big. You know, that's their professions is making the furniture and making this, that, and the other for the player housing. Like, that would just add a whole new aspect of the game and keep people playing that's one of their big things right now is it's kind of getting to be an old game and they want to keep people in the game and keep people playing and that would definitely go a long way to make that happen yeah i agree because like listening to um starman there like what's that old game i didn't play everquest has been around longer than wow right If, if i'm correct so they're doing something right And like I said, I've never played it, but thinking about the graphics back then and changing over time, they're doing something right. So take something from them, learn from them, learn from other games and and bring that in. Because like you said, they're old. What are you doing to keep people fresh and entertained? And it may not be a house for everybody, but like when I listen about the mount thing, like why do I need mount equipment? Why are you changing the way mounts have been for 14 years? Why? So what? I don't have a water strider, water walking, find a shaman, swim. I don't get all that. And that's where I think they're making the wrong decisions because you're pissing everybody off about how you're doing your mount. But now the thing, again, people worked hard for, go and get their, I think it's angler rep with the panda people. Now you just, you ripped that from them. It's like, give me my candy back. You're screwed. That makes no sense to me. At a minimum, give them the dang mount and say, maybe you can't run on land, but within a certain distance of water, you can mount up and then go over water again. Why did you have to change everything? I don't want to see mammoths and brontosaurs chilling out in the water on floaties, like hanging out. That just (laughs) makes no sense to me. Think about what you're doing. Yes, I get you want to freshen the game up and do these things, but are you doing the right things? Because if you take, I don't know how they do things out there, but there's a God knows how many podcasts. Who's a row that helps keep that people tracking on what's out there. Start listening because Frasley has guests. We have people doing lore people want this stuff. We want that deep rooted and feeling of what wow is supposed to be. Not the silly stuff that is, I don't even know what it is anymore. That's why I'm on my break now. It's not bored of the game. I'm bored of how they're doing the game. Will you be returning to wow? You've told me that a uh, classic. Oh my God. Yes. Classic. Give me classic all day long. I want my <laughs> talent trees. I want my wait until 40 for a mount. And I want uninflated friggin banks and all i want take me back to the beginning i'll be happy and i will i think i have to wait till july i'm not very happy about that part but yeah as soon as wow pops uh classic back out buy eso drop my sub switch back over and that's where i'll be and uh have uh, 10 characters per wild classic realm with 50 characters across all wild classic realms in your region they just announced the character limit t- today for uh classic it makes sense Yes, absolutely. I have no complaints personally on that uh, character limit. Who had time for alts back then? I don't even know because it was <laughs> much more work. And like, uh, again, listening to some of the different podcasts and how people were like, oh, this is hard now. And I'm like, you have no idea. You right. do not know it. I mean, granted, I never played in vanilla, but I started an early Burning Crusade. Oh, and even that versus Wrath versus everything else beyond, like that's definitely different. Yeah. I, I miss the talent trees. I really do. I I enjoyed being holy, but dipping into the shadow tree or vice versa. Like I loved being able to make my character a little more high. I eventually got to the point where I min max a little more because I wanted to be a better healer and keep my people alive. But I liked having a little more of that freedom with my choices. And there are some zones that I miss. But I miss the way they look. Being how they were pre-Cata. Yeah. And that's the thing, like walking into Barons and you're like, what? Thousand Needles. I miss going out in a Thousand Needles. Because like I said, I started as Horde and it's like, now you're underwater. And I'm like, eh, it's not the same. It doesn't have the same <laughs> feel. And I, I want that nostalgia. I want to go back and part of my language, I'm going to get my ass handed to me playing old school. And then it's like, but that was a thing. That read your actual quest and then you go figure out where you need to be. Stop looking at your arrow that tells you here's where it is. Go hand it in, walk away. That's where I say some of the other issues are. It's, it's too easy. Where's the challenge? And, and if you think the rep grind's a challenge, you made the wrong choice there because the game has gotten away from what it really is. So, I mean, because if I think about it, it's like you have Christy Golden over there now writing and and doing things for, for, I don't know about lore, but, you know, she's trying to bring in the storyline and make it interesting because you've lost that. You don't have that. In my opinion, you don't have that anymore. You don't have the same feel that you did 14 years ago. And I don't know if you can, but 
God, give me classic. That's all I need. I'll be good. With all this talk, we are more than just gaming. I, we brought up a lot about, about the game, but one thing I, I know is we are also our hobbies. I mean, podcasting and dancing are two of my non-gaming activities. So let, let's take a break from WoW and let's talk about your hobbies. So you are into photography. How did your interest in photography start? So that one I picked up a, about, I think my first or second, I've got a couple of college degrees into it. Somewhere in college there, I found a camera of my dad's that uh, was an old Olympus OM2. So film, manual, all old school and picked it up. And he's like, you want to use it? And I'm like, I don't even know how to use this thing. I, I don't know what I'm like, look through it and click a thing. I'm like, oh, okay, good. And then he went through and kind of showed me how it works and explained like the mechanics inside the actual camera and, and what it was to kind of take a picture. And once I started doing that, and back in the day, if nobody's used a film camera, it gets expensive to take a lot of pictures, pay somebody to develop that, and then have the pictures and then hold the negatives and don't lose. I mean, it was just a, a big chance to do something new and different. And when I picked it up, I call myself a professional amateur for over 15, 16 years, I think. Probably more like 20, but who's counting? So, but I mean, that's just something I do. I don't, obviously now I don't have as much time as I used to. Being in college, you'd, you go to class, you get out of there as fast as you can. You can you head up to the mountains because I did some college here. I did some in North Carolina and a lot of trees, a lot of beauty and gone, done. It's just an amazing thing to go do. What was the biggest challenge you've had to overcome to get into photography? When you're doing photography, you don't actually always have to take the picture. Sometimes it's important to just stop, put it down, and enjoy what you're seeing. You're never going to see that exactly again. And to have that patience, I'm not a patient person. If you ask anybody that knows me, I'm not very patient. But that's a hard thing to do, I think, for anybody. Because you want to capture it. You want to go, I, I got it. This is mine. Yeah. But at the same time, to, to take that moment and step back and go, no, this is bigger than me and just enjoy it, that's a difficult thing to do sometimes. That's one thing that stops me from ta- even like amateur photography on like my phone is there are times like I want to enjoy the moment. I don't capture the photos because it's like I don't want to live through my viewfinder sometimes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because once you're once your eyes up on that, you stop seeing everything else around you. And anybody and everybody is a photographer. If you want to do it, you are. That's all there is to it. Just like, oh, I can't dance. No go dance, go do whatever you can do it. You may not think you look the same as somebody else, but it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. As long as you're having fun doing your thing, push that off. I grew up in New York. I have a very big effort attitude. Like I don't worry about what, no offense. I, I love both of you guys. You guys are great. Love your podcast. But if you're like, I do the worst dancer ever and be like, cool, works for me. I'm having fun. And that's just the way life is. So if you're going to go out and do photography or whatever, just do it and, and be there. It doesn't matter if you're looking through a lens or looking through a, a camera phone. Just have fun. Do do your thing and, and just enjoy it. And what would you say is the resource you find yourself going to most often? It's kind of a mix. There's, you know, that whole like doing things with my dad. So digitally now, he doesn't do as much of the photography. His eyesight's really, really bad. But when I do still take out my old school manual camera, I'll still kind of reference him. And, you know, there, there's that. Yeah, I get it. But at the same time, it's nice to ask him and, and, and lean on him and, and let him be a part of that. So in that aspect, there's that. But when it comes to doing it digitally, which is more the medium I shoot now, I don't even actually go look online too much unless it's a technical, like, what's wrong with my camera? I'll actually, I have friends of mine that I used to work with that are photographers, and I'll just, I ask them because it's, it's the same thing. Like, I'm not trying to be Ansel Adams. I'm not trying to be anybody else. It's like, you're doing the same thing I'm doing. You have a different camera, different thing. What are you doing? So what is your information? What is your knowledge? And let me try to adapt that to what I'm doing. It doesn't make me or you better or worse, but we educate each other and we make ourselves better for it, I think. I find that when I'm talking with different podcasters, I'm not going to do the podcast the way that they do it. Like, I, I don't have the audacity to use audacity. <laughs> I thought I was going to go one full show without a face palm. I was sitting there thinking, <laughs> I have not really, I mean, I've laughed. But I've not actually face palm yet. I'm like, maybe I will escape one episode. No, no. <laughs> I think it's just natural that you have to do it. And if you don't, it's like you broke the show. Yeah. I have a dance partner that I dance with. And I tell them my goal every time we get together is I got to make you laugh. That's my unwritten rule. There you go. And I saw that you mentioned you do a little <laughs> bit of woodworking. So let's cut into this hobby as well. Oh, your transitions. <laughs> they always make me laugh every time. <laughs> So how did you get started into woodworking? Um, That one, again, was actually my dad because he's actually got a shop in his house. So um, a lot of times if something broke or didn't work, fix it. You know, you don't always have to buy something or spend money. So I used to just kind of watch him do things because, I mean, his, I don't know, if if he's very humble. So I'm like, oh, my God, you're amazing. Like, Ali was like, oh, I'm not a professional. To me, you are. You're doing something I don't do. 
and you're the knowledge base. So that makes you a professional. And when I watch him, like he's built a guitar from scratch. He's built fly rods from scratch, Wow, all sorts of things. And I'm like, yeah, I could do it. But at the same time, it's like, I just enjoy watching them. I do the little things like he's turned, he's taught me how to use a lathe to turn and I make pens or salt and pepper mills, you know, so you have them on your table and, you know, a bowl, easy things. But it's it's that doing something with him. And, and you know, like I said before, it's just watching him do it. I'm like, that's awesome. I want to learn something. And, you know, he's kind of shown me how to do that. It's awesome. You lost your spot, didn't you? Yeah. I, you have in here about what some advice anyone's ever given you. And and I think it's it's a little different from photography where it's, you know, the, the patience. You still have to have that, but it's in a different sense. You don't want to rush when you're working with wood because if I'm turning a pen and I'm putting a blade to wood and I get too anxious or, you know, don't pay attention, you ruin that piece of wood. You know, it doesn't mean you can't throw it in the scrap and maybe whittle it with a knife, but what you're trying to make is different. So that the patience is different. And it's also, instead of seeing like in photography, you're seeing what you're looking at and taking that picture. I'm trying to see something that's not there and trying to imagine the end picture. And, you know, those are, again, I try to do things that try to make me build patience. Again, I'm not very good at it, but that's a lifelong goal I'll work on. But those are two things for me that, that are there. And then, you know, he's always told me like, just see what you want to be. You know, it may not look like his, it may not look like the same thing doesn't matter it's yours you did it and you made it and so take pride in what you've done and would you say that your dad is is a resource that you go to often for woodworking oh and that absolutely i mean i can go there's a woodcraft it's a store out here in colorado i'm sure there are other places too but you can go in there and you can ask people there's tons of knowledge and and same thing though i'm not going to ask them when i have somebody at home i'd rather learn from not that he's better or worse it's just it's right there and it gets you involved with people that are in your life and and you know that's to me the best resource you can have Absolutely. Some of my best resources that are in my, in my family group. And, and it's nice to go to them because I know also that they're not going to look at me like, I can't believe you're asking that stupid question. And it's like, if you don't know the answer, it's not a stupid question. Absolutely. <laughs> this you is know, true. I get teased all the time because like with my wife or, or anybody that knows me and you're like, well, what do you think about this? And I'll be like, man, I'm not really sure. And they're like, you're going to call your dad, aren't you? And I'm like, no. <laughs> There is nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I don't think so either. It's one of those things you grew up as a kid and it's like you have an important decision to make. Who are you going to go talk to? And it's like, you can ask your friends, but my parents have already probably done something similar. And it's like, even at my age, I'm like, you know what? Shoot, I'm going to go ask him because he might have an answer. And there's times where he likes to mess with me. And he'll be like, well, instead of answering it, he'll do the whole like beat around the bush to make you think about your own answer. And I'm like, God, you got me again. And it's fun. It's, it's good stuff. So yeah, reaching out to family and friends is always good, but I don't know. There's somebody always about talking to your parents. I like this connection, even like the gaming and your hobbies. I like that there's a connection to your dad in it. I think about like gaming as family too, because the people that are in my guild, I don't see you. I have people in Canada and other states, but they're still family. I talk to them every day. So like kids nowadays, are they got a phone in their face. And yeah, Discord, you don't see by somebody, but you learn to have that social aspect to talk and get to know people and, and your family grows as you grow over time. So it's like, you can reach out to anybody at any time and those connections, you can't give that up. And that's why, like, you know, when I say, oh, I'll come back for classic, but I don't think I'll ever leave. Wow. Until someday I'm too old to play a game probably, or they close it down because of that connection and that social aspect. I left WoW for quite a while, but I came back. Now I'm not in the same guild that I was in back things. I, I could not find them. Uh, Miltus Justica from Stormrage. If any of you are out there, uh, Broad and the Dwarf Free says hi. I'm just... <laughs> I tried finding them and I can't, but maybe they're out there. It, it would be amazing if one of them was uh, listening and, they're, and, and, and they hear Broad and they're like, oh, wow, Broaden's around. There you go. Yeah, like I took a break meh, end of Kata through middle Pandaria, roughly. I was hardcore raiding at the time and the raid fell apart and I was super tired of the grind in Kata and also money was a huge issue. So I couldn't really justify the sub anymore because ramen was getting too, too <laughs> expensive. And that's when I really got into Fallout and the Fallout series. And there's nothing wrong with taking a break. What's great about being a gamer is there's so many different games to enjoy and so many different things to do and different fantastic hobbies to get into. But there is always that social aspect that brings us back to wow. It's it's the people. For me, it was my guildies that are like you were saying, Fangirl, like like my family. Like I've gone up to Canada to visit them a couple of times. All in all, when you make the social connection, like that's gonna be what keeps you coming back. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Cause there's just nothing like it. I, I think you replied actually, Ali, to somebody's question of a week or whatever it was about if somebody gave you however many millions or whatever the dollar amount would be, would you leave? Wow. Yeah. Those blizz mates. Yeah. Blizz, yeah. It's like, <laughs> man, I'm and it's like, I would drop wow in a heartbeat and it's, it has nothing to do with that. Cause just like you, if I had that much money, I could spread that around to everybody that needs it, save some left. And I I'd probably splurge too much, but I would literally try to get a plane ticket for every one of the guildies in my guild and go somewhere like together. And I'd be like, done. Cause there is another game. I can go to ESO and some of us play that. Exactly. Some of us play something else, but boom, I'll find you on discord and we'll talk. Sorry. I, I've just been eating a cupcake with ranch on it. A, a flaggy boy got me into eating that. <laughs> no, he didn't Josh. That was horrible. Well, if it's not flaggy, then I'm going to have to get my uh, baked potatoes sticking on the frosty. So uh, I can hang out with blizzmates a little more often. <laughs> yeah. I, I just had a frost today. I didn't have any baked potatoes or French fries. Both of these hobbies are similar in their creation of something to be used or consumed. I mean, consumed in the enjoyment sense. I mean, hopefully you aren't eating phot- photographs or furniture, but even if the tools in the finished products are different, they share some similarities. So I got a couple of questions. So what is one thing people don't realize about photography and or woodworking? Anybody can do it. It doesn't matter what your level or your skill But if you think about things overall, trades are very important. Not everybody can do HVAC or not everybody can do this or that, electricity or electricians, journeymen or whatever. So if you have the time to learn, anybody can do it. You can just go and work on it. I mean, yeah, I don't think I'd go get a degree in photography because I don't think I have the motivation to push that far enough to make it a paying job. I even tried at one point to like do it on the side for side money. And, you know, it's a lot of work, but it didn't change the fact that I'm still a photographer at whatever level I'm at. And I still enjoy doing it when I can. And the same with woodworking. It's just, if you got some time, learn. If, if you don't know somebody with a wood shop, you can Google. There's classes. There's places that do things like that. There's even places here where I live. You can go downtown and still take classes in photography. I mean, they're not that expensive. You get a few sessions and you learn something new. It's amazing. Like the people I know who are amateur photographers do an amazing job and and they start doing it here and there. And it's fun to try those tools because you never know if you'll be in the photography or you may get it into video. I know people that started in, in photography go into video and then they start making YouTube videos. I mean, some, some people started on Vine not knowing what it was and they'll forever be on YouTube because it is the grind that never... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Once you're on the internet, you're there forever. Absolutely. I was trying to make Allie face palm with a... Uh... She's got the head shake. She's just like, come on. <laughs> I'm busy finding this tweet for chat so uh, they can see this cupcake and ranch thing. <laughs> oh, there's people that hadn't seen it? Oh, you guys. Are- there you go. And it'll be in the show notes. If you have not seen the Blizznates ranch cupcake... And really, if you haven't listened to Blizznates yet, you really should because it's oh. fantastic. Absolutely. And they will be on next week along with Allie. There you go. Right. Be on their show soon, too. Oh, this is not a recorded podcast, so thankfully nobody will know. We're recording Sunday. Your show comes out on Monday. It's fine. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> like, is, like next week is going to be the new Game of Thrones endgame setup because now I got all my podcasters almost in one place. Oh, I, I want to live. <laughs> so I, sh- I, I shouldn't snap right now, right? Please don't. Okay. <laughs> So what is one hidden pitfall with these hobbies that prevents people from succeeding? Woodworking, like like I say, not everybody has a shop. So, I mean, it's probably about the only thing I could think of is otherwise you can always try and practice and and you like it or you don't. So it's just access to having something there and woodworking. So even if you don't have a shop, it's as simple as whittling. You can grab a a knife and start whittling on something and try to carve an animal or you can make a a fake little sword. It doesn't matter. Once you start doing it, it's, it's there. So don't feel like you don't have the skills or the ability or the place to do it. You can be anywhere and do that. It's it's easy. And then with photography, I think not so much a pitfall, but there's always arguments on what's photography, what's not, because your mediums can be urban or digital or film or print. And it's like, it doesn't, it's all trying to get to the same place. So don't feel like because you use an iPhone or an Android that you're not a photographer, there's still a market for that. There's people filming Net Geo stuff on iPads over in Africa. Guess what? Still photography, still videography, still the same thing. So don't feel like that's stopping you. Do what you need to do, and and that's all there is to it. And when you encounter a problem in either, what is the first thing you do to overcome it? Uh, With photography, it's just try again. That's all there is to it. I mean, especially with film, because before digital was really there, if you took a picture, you didn't know until you printed it or or got it printed for you. Um, Unless you had a a dark room, you didn't know what that looked like. So you might have taken a picture and been like, man, I know that's it. And then you see it, it's blurry and there's a bird in the way and a little different nowadays for digital versus film. But 
with film, you can't always see what you have until it's done in either sense, whether it's digital or film. Try again. Don't think that you're done right then and there, that you can't redo something. You can't always get that same image. It won't be there again. Time changes. Sun's different. Everything's always there. But just stick with it and, and don't think that you failed or or messed up. It's it's okay. Try, try again. It's the same things you learn as a kid until you grow up. The woodworking is more, if you come into a problem, if you're trying to turn something or whittle something that doesn't work, don't be afraid to ask questions. The, the biggest thing is, if you, you were talking earlier, if you don't know the answers, not a stupid question. Reach out. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there and find that information because otherwise you're just, you're like other people that are shy or maybe are afraid and oh, what, what I want to ask, but I can't, I'm, I'm afraid, I'm nervous. It's okay. Just ask. And, you know, if somebody puts somebody else down for doing that, to, Tell them to come by. I'll talk to them. What is the best thing that's happened to you since you started these hobbies? Probably, say, I mean, in general, because, you know, I have a close relationship with my dad. So, I mean, that bond and having that there, even as an adult, feeling like a kid sometimes is pretty cool. Uh, at least for the woodworking, that's more specifically me and him nowadays. But with the photography, I think the best thing is just meeting other photographers and talking about that. And, and the work I do now in real life, there's times where I see other people and I'll notice their gear and I'll ask questions and they're not afraid to just talk and share. And, and it's a outside of wow way to bond and, and make more social connections. And it, it's it's pretty fun. Yeah. Out of all these, it's amazing that the communities you find in, in that bonding. Absolutely. It's, it's live wow. It's, it's a different game. It's a different thing. And there's different people but it's somewhere you can make more friends. Yeah, I'm I'm part of a podcast meetup here in Columbus and it's it's amazing the people that I'm meeting. I messaged Allie that I met one of my podcast mentors and like I've not talked to this person d- directly but I heard them and I, I had that fanboy moment where it was like they're just like me. <laughs> but it, it's amazing <laughs> the people that you meet and then you grow as, as a person as, as well. Absolutely. Yeah, Cause I, even when I see you all doing your podcasts and you know, whether it's lightning balls, blizz mates, CTR, world of Warcast, dungeon fables, I can list them all. Not like Roken, but the ones that I listen to and the fact that, and I'm not talking, what do you call them? Bumpers or something where like at the end, the thing at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Not even just those, but the fact that I hear y'all referencing each other, talking about each other and the support that still goes back into, wow, that's the people you want to play with. Cause like when I hear, Renata talking to Starman about how like she doesn't do dungeon and raids because somebody's rude or mean or they talk bad. It's like everybody's got their own thing. But when I see how well everybody comes together, that's probably, you know, not getting all sappy, but like that's the best thing about wow. And for anybody that's out there, I'm AP, Airy Peak, Escape Plan. If if one of us is on or you need somebody, reach out, hit Frasley, he'll find me, find me on Twitter. But there's always somebody that's gonna help you. And, and that's the thing about wow. Don't be scared, don't be afraid to try some hit any of us up and we'll be there. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. No <laughs> the community that I've seen in the podcast is one of the nicest communities I've, that I've met. I mean, it's amazing that I can talk to different podcasters. And in fact, I've got podcasters that I'm bringing onto the show who are in Blizzard. And I'm, I, I've am i been telling them this past year, I've been afraid to talk with them. They're like one person that, that we all know was like, you didn't need to be afraid to ask me on. And I was like, you're amazing and all that. I hate this. You're awesome. So I can't wait to get you on this. <laughs> <laughs> I was just afraid to ask this on the show, but yeah, I mean, just it's that community and it's the people and getting to meet people and seeing the people behind the avatar. That's a podcast too. Behind the avatar is one. That's another wizard podcast about people. I don't know if y'all remember we had a soup. I don't, I think it started on the food and we got into podcasting, but you know, I always say I'm not a podcaster, but the people I talk to are, and I still say someday the two things that would be amazing is one you doing, I'm sure there's somebody else that doesn't like to curse. We're going to get you a charity one where every time we get you to like drop a word, it doesn't have to always be an F bomb, but drop some stuff. We get people to donate, and I think that'd be pretty awesome. The second one would be literally to get as many podcasters together, and I think it would be hectic and crazy but worth it to do some sort of like Blizzard community thing to support pick a bunch, pick one, doesn't matter. I think that would be some of the most amazing things ever. Yeah. Yeah, we – so both Frasley and I got to be on Pod Before the Con for um, World of Podcasts last year before BlizzCon, and the panel we were on, there was six people, and that alone was – Amazing and fantastic and a little chaotic, but really, really cool. And I can imagine how awesome it'd be to get even more people and to get together for a charity like that would be really cool. Yeah, I, I would just not want to be the one editing. So I would say, <gasps> Techie, what are you doing? Come on. It's okay. Yeah, Techie. <laughs>
So, but even, yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's hectic with that many people at one time, but even if it was some way to make an event, when it was just each night you have a different pod and you have maybe a similar moderator, but you break it down. And I don't know, I just, that's one of the things why I say that I'll never leave WoW is this community, these people. But if you could do that, it could be so much more and so great. Yeah. Coming together for a cause. I, I mean, just the people that I know, I, Des Mephisto just raised over 2000 for charity. That was just in one month. That's amazing. That's great stuff. Yeah. Ooh, well, I would love to uh, keep chatting, but I, I, I realized that we've come to the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I had no transition there. So I was just like, <laughs> it works. So, it works. So the train stopped. We're at the end of the rails. Yep. And thankfully it didn't go off the rails. So well, I don't or know. We did it. Glitches in there. <laughs> yeah. It, it might've gone, gone off the rails a few times. So thank you both for joining me on the Frazzlecast. Where can we find you on the interwebs? We'll start with Fingaro. I am socially declined over the years. So you can find me well, pretty much just at Twitter. So at Fengaro, F-E-N-G-A-R-A-L. If you want to reach out and chat with me, I'm usually there. Check it every day and love to meet some new people. And Allie, when, when you aren't famous filming jokes or stuff like that, and you have an amazing giggle, I, 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 <laughs> Sorry. I agree with. <laughs> Sorry, I'm embarrassing you. <laughs> so, where can we find you on the interwebs? Well, you can find my show Dungeon Fables at dungeonfables.com or wherever you find your podcast, such as this one. You can also hear me every week on All Things Azeroth at allthingsazeroth.com or again, wherever you get your podcast. You can find my show on Twitter at Dungeon Fables and you can find me at Aliandra's K. I think with that, I'm going to go meet up with Capo because Capo has a cupcake with wasabi. That sounds so good right now. Oh, gross. You have to work on your edible choices here. Activating customized offer safe transporter. I'm back in my home of Ironforge until we one day reclaim Nomergon. Yay! Let's look at what has been happening in the community. Awesome. Let's do that. So BlizzCon is happening this year. I mentioned this last week, and I have a link in the show notes to all the details. But I want to remind you about BlizzCon Wave 2 tickets that are going to be going on sale Wednesday, May 8th at 7 p.m. Pacific. If you listen to this on Monday or Tuesday or even Wednesday morning or afternoon, you still have time. They are using the AXS system for ordering. Make sure to sign up for an account beforehand. There's a waiting room that opens 30 minutes before sales. I've got a link in the show notes from Blizzard about five things you need to know about ordering tickets. Re a reminder that transferring tickets is like Ticketmaster and is a permanent transfer to their account. I cannot stress this enough. Please use a secure and unique password. I know someone who lost their ticket to Hamilton because of their passwords. The transfer will send this to their AXS account and then it's out of your account forever. The deadline for transferring is August 25th at 11.59 p.m. Pacific. Details on the non-Blizzard run parties will be soon, but I read that Bell was already working on Digicon details. And I know that all the other ones are probably working on it too, so it'll be an exciting year. The site known as LF BlizzCon has been renamed to WT BlizzCon. Elk or Elka, I, I don't know how to pronounce the name, has been part of the management over the years, but they had to take over control after the disturbing news regarding one of the other maintainers of LF BlizzCon. You can find the new site at wtblizzcon.com. So good luck, and I'm excited to see all the people who get tickets. And definitely send me your screenshots. Let me know your experiences. I want to hear all the awesome stuff that you experienced this year at BlizzCon. And in some interesting news, Blizzard will not be at Gamescom this year. They have been in attendance since the start of the event in 2009. This is kind of concerning, especially as it gave access to people in Europe. And what a year to not be there. This is WoW's 15th anniversary. Sadly, things like this were to be expected after the layoffs and the restructuring of the community management teams across the world. And WoW 20 held an event this past Sunday called the Zolgrub Incursion. After Lordaeron, Alliance wants to take the whole possession of the Eastern Kingdoms. Sylvanas asked the Horde to come back in Zolgrub to protect the Gurubashi capital city. The battle took place in Zolgrub. Two teams fought each other. One attacked, the other defended. Now, I'm recording this before the event, but I'm talking about it as if it's in the past. So I don't know what happened, but I bet it was a lot of fun. This was a group I had not known about. So WoW 20 is a group that is aiming to organize fun, original, and epic events in the world of Warcraft. So definitely check them out as well. I think that is awesome. And I love seeing events like this. 
And there are some amazing people in our community who do some amazing creations. Sadasim has created Darnassus in The Sims 4, so it will live on. Though uh, there is also fire in The Sims 4, so just be very careful. They also brought Booty Bay and Darkmoon Fair to the world of The Sims, so this looks amazing and definitely check it out. Well, this has been another epic episode of Frazzlecast. I always enjoy making the show and getting to talk with guests each week. And I'm always excited for you to listen to what was discussed. And thank you to Fingaro who was on this episode. They tweeted me during the week that they enjoyed the episode with Rooster. Crush also sent in a tweet saying they enjoyed that episode as well. They commented on the BlizzCon pricing that I brought up and they said that the strategy is a normal thing to do, but they agree that BlizzCon is not a normal event. They will, however, be getting a normal ticket and going to BlizzCon. So make sure to look up at the Crushinator with a K and get together with them during BlizzCon if you're going. And every episode, I'd like to take a time just to thank all my Twitch subs out there. Thank you to Michael of the Blue Recluse and the Nerd of this podcast. Thank you to Naughty Grandpa. Thank you to Thorn of Liking Balls and BNN. Thank you to Zorts the Goblin. And thank you to Nihar. All of these bits, subs, and shirts go to help supporting this labor of love. If you want to support this show with a Twitch sub, go to support.gnomepodcast.com. And you can also buy a shirt at gnomeshirt.com. Subs also get access to my Twitch emotes like Facepalm, the Gnome Train, and XD. And these can be used in Twitch, Discord, and as stickers in iMessage using the Twitch iOS app. I love using the stickers a lot, so you might see them across Discord and like iMessage and stuff like that. Well, I am Frasley, and you can find the show at gnomepodcast.com. So until next week, be awesome. <laughs>to the Fraz Report, a short broadcast by me, the awesome gnome, about the world of Warcraft. So I need to confess something to you. I'm a gnome, but I was so tempted to try a program to make myself look ginormous so all would cower before Fraz, the lord of all Azeroth. Of course, you wouldn't have seen this on your screen. I was the only one who would have seen this, but it would have made me feel big and powerful like some super being. The unlimited power of being a titan. I mean, don't worry. I wasn't going to chop a world in half like Sir Garrus. So I didn't use this program because with great power comes great responsibility. I'm glad I didn't either. And now no one needs to worry about me wielding an infinity gauntlet. Blizzard destroyed my future reign of power. I guess that's also to help protect the mechanics of in-game content. This was initially a 180-day suspension, but they reversed it and left it as a warning to not reverse engineer the client. Speaking of models, Valpira and Mechanomes have been speculated to be coming as allied races. We see that Brewfest monks have appeared for Valpira. They've had a ton of customization, and they can be seen in the Wildhead dressing room. Well, Mechanomes have also have a ton of customization as well, and Wildhead has added those to the dressing room. And, you know, I can see why they wouldn't add a Brewfest mug for Mechanomes. Can Mechanomes really drink? Wouldn't that, like, spoil the insides? You know, you know, all that liquid. Liquid doesn't go well with electricity. I've learned that the hard way. Oh, my iPhone 3GS. Oh, I bought you with my first paycheck. And, oh, it got destroyed by water. But anyway, there have also been a ton of models that have been data mined into PTR, as well as things people are finding as they play through. 8.2 as well as 8.2.5 and then hopefully in 8.3 are going to be things to watch out for blizzcon which is happening this year november 1st and 2nd we just got the dates and this will be one to watch as we will hopefully see the next expansion announced i'm pulling for rise of number gun but i think that may just be in my dreams i've jumped that before well that's all the time i have for this report so until next time be awesome are you getting ganked at max level Are you finding yourself lost in BGs? Is your age greater than your PvP rating? Do you find yourself being pounded harder than Sea-Doo at BlizzCon? If the answer is yes, then don't wait another minute and listen to the self-proclaimed professionals. Download Technically PvP Podcast now. Our informative and lengthy podcasts are available 24-7 on your app of choice. To help with all of your PvP needs. Frazzlecast is a fan podcast that covers Blizzard games. We are not affiliated with Blizzard Entertainment, Inc., Views expressed by the host and guests are their own. Some of the art, music, and sound effects come from Blizzard Games and are owned by Blizzard Entertainment, Inc. No copyright infringement is intended. This show is brought to you by Dragon Powered Studio. Find more at dragonpoweredstudio.com.